Well, good morning, YouTube. Let's take a look at the design of the Craftsman C3 lithium ion battery pack over time. Here are four packs I've opened up and taken a look at, ranging from a very early compact model to the latest extended capacity pack. There's a definite trend towards increasing circuit board size and complexity and also a reduction in the hand wiring over time. Craftsman must be pushing these packs to a higher volume and lower production cost point. And it appears they are addressing some field issues that cropped up over the years with design improvements. All the battery management system or BMS boards are surface mount technology and conformal coated for moisture protection. This looks to be the oldest design in my collection of packs. I haven't found any date codes on this unit. It is the only lithium pack I have that is finicky when it comes to chargers. It often will only charge in my AC powered multi-chemistry quick charger and not in my 12 volt powered charger. You can see the BMS board is quite small in this version. All the battery pack wiring is hand soldered. You can see all the uh, connections there. The power MOSFETs are below the PCB and there's no ventilation in the battery case. And unlike the later versions, which I'll show you in a minute. Here's a shot of the model information. And the dual MOSFETs are in-channel IRF 1404Z models, 40 volt, 75 amp, and 3.7 milliohm rating. And they're the same as used on all the other packs I have. And this board has two small ICs one small square 20 pin surface mount under the connector post you can see that way in there I can't get any information off of that one and the second IC appears to be a 32 pin SSOP device with my I can't find any information with these numbers. There is a large 220 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic capacitor likely part of the balanced charging circuit I'll cover this in a follow-up video. And you can see these two wires that connect to the side terminals. The blue one runs down to a pad marked T1S and the red one connects to a pad labeled T2S. So these are likely some sort of uh, temperature sense for the pack, perhaps to tell the power tool to shut down if the battery overheats. I measure 36 to 38 K ohms across those pins at room temperature on the various packs I've checked. On to this later design. This is the pack with the two dead cells I tore apart in an earlier video. I did find an 0830 mark on the PCB, perhaps a week 30 of 2008 date code. You can clearly see the trend towards a more complex BMS board. It's larger and covers the whole uh, battery pack. This eliminates the hand solder uh, or eliminates the separate wires and lets the BMS connect to all five cells with direct solder connections. So here, there, 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 I think right here and right there. That saves on manufacturing cost and cuts down on field failures as well as increases the maximum current capacity. This board seems to have dropped the electrolytic capacitor but has a fairly large surface mount capacitor that may serve the same purpose. And I can't see the IC markings on this PCB due to the conformal coating, but it's a 16-pin SSOP device. And you can see the MOSFETs are now atop the PCB with a larger heatsink below 
and ventilation holes in the case. If I turn that over, one can assume they had some failures due to overheating and this was done to help cool the MOSFETs. I may drill some holes in my old battery case. And here's a shot of the model information. This model has the integrated fuel gauge. It initially had just the push button and three color LED in the back of the case right here but then they added these LEDs in the connector post to light up translucent lettering in the power tool handles and as you can see they had to add some hand wiring to connect the fuel gauge to the uh, LEDs up in the post so there's uh, four connections there down to that board. Then this pack is the next in terms of design. It has an April 2010 date on the PCB. The electrolytic capacitor is back. Perhaps it works better in the balancing circuit. And you can see the trend towards a more complex uh, BMS circuit. There's hardly any bare FR4 left. And this pack works fine in all my chargers with no issues. On this one I can make out the 28 pin IC markings of it. Finally, here's the extended capacity pack or XCP. It has a May 2010 date code and is nearly identical to the last BMS. Here's a shot of the model information down there. And the only major change is that the capacitor is now underneath the PCB, probably for space reasons, since you have the 10 uh, 18650 cells jammed in below. And so they added a small bump out on the PCB to accommodate the capacitor down below. On this board, you can see this resistor, R11, that seems to be glued down to one of the uh, cells. This must be a thermistor used to temp sense the temperature of the battery pack. And in terms of mechanical design, the XCP pack actually uses six screws to hold the pack together. The four here, and then these two that uh, screw down into the, hold the post down. So that is likely done to deal with the added weight of the uh, extra five cells. The compact pack weighs about 480 grams. The XCP is 740 grams or 260 grams heavier. This will conclude this video comparison of the C3 battery pack evolution over time. Far from just some lithium-ion cells in a plastic case, these battery packs are quite impressive engineering and manufacturing designs. I'll try to go into some of the other aspects of the battery pack in upcoming videos. If you have any questions or information to add, use the comments section below. Feel free to check out some of my other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to get the latest updates. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next episode.